Hi guys, today we're going to talk about similar figures and indirect measurement. And the I can statements we're working on are I can solve problems involving scale drawings of geometric figures and I can find actual lengths and areas from a scale drawing. And we're going to focus on the problem solving aspect of these scale drawings and finding the actual lengths. And we're not going to get into area in this lesson, but we will in class tomorrow from a scale drawing. So when one shape is a dilation or stretch of another shape, the shapes are said to be similar. So basically, it's same shape, different sizes. And to be similar, those, the, um, the lengths of all of the sides of one figure are going to be proportional to the lengths of all the sides of a second figure. So for example, in this one, I have a length of 2. When I multiply it by 2, I get a length of 4 for its similar figure. Now if I did it to one side of the figure, I have to do the same thing to the other side. So if my width is 2, its similar figure would also have to be multiplying the width by 2 to get 4. So you see, you multiply all sides by the same thing or by your scale factor to get a similar figure or a dilation. And we'll be talking more about dilations on a coordinate plane in our next lesson. So, again, it doesn't matter what I multiply the length and width of the first figure or my original figure by, as long as I multiply it by the same thing to get its similar figure or dilation. So, when one shape, uh, when two shapes are similar, their angles or corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And corresponding means if I have one in this bottom left corner and the second shape is in the same configuration, the bottom left angle here, they're going to be the same. And all their other corresponding angles will also be the same. See, B corresponds with F. That just means, corresponding means, that it is in the sh uh, same position on different shapes. Notice C and G are corresponding angles because they're in the same position on two different figures here. They're going to have the same uh, angle measures. Same with um, D and H. Another thing you're going to notice about when two shapes are similar, their sides are going to be proportional. So if I take the left side here, which is 6, and compare it to the bottom side, which is 18, 6 over 18, it's going to have a proportion that is equal to the left side of my second figure and the bottom of my second figure. Do you see how I have side to bottom, side to bottom? Okay, so those need to be um, equal, uh, equivalent ratios to make it a proportion. Okay, so the ratios on the side of one shape has to be equal to the ratio of the sides on the other shape. And I can figure that out, sorry, by cross multiplying. So 6 times 12 is going to give me 72. Likewise, 18 times 4 is going to give me 72. So cross products are equal. Another thing I can do is simplify. So if I simplify here, I can divide 6 and 18 by 3. That gives me 2 ninths. Oops, sorry, 2 sixths. And um, if I divide 4 and 12 by, uh, oh, and that can be simplified again to 1 third. And 12 and four, tw uh, 4 and 12 can both be divided by 4. And uh, when I simplify that, I get 1 third. So two ways I can tell if this, these two shapes are similar is if their proportions are equal. And the two ways I can tell that are cross products or by simplifying to see if I get the same ratios. And if you'll recall, a ratio is a comparison between two or more things. 
So they can be different units. Apples to oranges, dogs to cats, cups of flour to total cookies I can make. And when two ratios are equal, it's called a proportion. Okay, so I can also check by saying, well, I can multiply 3 times 2 to get 6. Likewise, I can multiply 8 times 2 to get 16. That's just another way to tell if two ratios are equal. When two ratios are equal, it's called a proportion. Again, 5 times 4 is 20. Likewise, 1 times 4 is 4. So this is, these two ratios are forming a proportion. In a proportion, the cross products are going to be equal. We talked about that. So if I multiply 3 times 15, I get 45. And 5 times 9 is also 45. So let's get back to similar shapes. When two shapes are similar, their sides are proportional. And this is, this is just like the um, example we just looked at. The cross products are equal. Let's do some practice. We're going to use cross products to solve for x in the following proportion. So, if I wanted to know if I need two cups of flour for five cookies, how many cups of flour would I need for 12 cookies? Now, this one I can't do in my head because I don't know five times what equals 12. I could work it out or I could use cross products. Oops. So I would multiply 2 times 12, which would give me 24, equals 5 times x, which is 5x. Now, in order to solve, I need to divide both sides by 5. So, 5 goes into 24 four times with 4 out of 5 left over. So, 4 and 4 fifths cups of flour equals x. Now, it's your turn. Try the next few problems on your own in the work section of your WSQ. Pause the video each time you get to a new problem. Now let's try this with a little bit of geometry. We're going to determine the missing side. And this is no different from setting up a regular proportion. I take the ratio of the two legs of this first triangle, 4 to 10, and I know it needs to be equal to the ratio of the two legs of the second triangle. Now notice, if the shorter leg, we're going to call it leg A, it needs to be, it needs to correspond in my proportion with the shorter leg or leg A of my second triangle. Okay? Once I set up the proportion, then I can just cross multiply and solve for x. So go ahead and try it. Solve for x. Okay, in the proportion we've set up, we've cross-multiplied, and 10 times x is 10x, and we do 4 times 5, which is 20. Then I need to divide by 10 to get x equals 2. So that's the length of the short leg on my second triangle. Since I'm told, and this little symbol means they're similar, since I'm told they're similar, I know x equals 2. It's your turn. Determine the missing length in the next couple of um, in the next couple of problems in the work section of your WSQ.
Now let's talk about indirect measurement very quickly. And this is the technique for using similar figures and proportions to find a measure. And we use this a lot with things that are very difficult to measure, like the height of a tree or the height of a building, where I don't really have a tool that will measure that. But looking here, I can determine the length of the stop sign shadow by knowing the height and length of this tree shadow and the height of the stop sign. When the sun beats down on objects outside, it's going to beat down on at the same um, and at the same angle on two different shapes that are very close to each other. So I've really just formed two right triangles. And I know these two right triangles are going to be similar because they both have a right angle. I know that the sun is beating down on these at the same angle, which makes the third angle of both of these equal. And so that tells me, if corresponding angles are congruent, that tells me that I have two similar figures here. So I would just simply set up a proportion to find this missing value. Go ahead and set up a proportion now to solve this problem. Now let's look at this problem. We need to determine the missing side. And what I really have here are two triangles that are right on top of each other. So in order to do this problem, it might be helpful to separate the overlapping triangles. And you'll see I have two similar figures. And I know this because I have two right angles here. These angles were right on top of each other, so I know they're the same which tells me the third corresponding angles, or set of corresponding angles, have to also be the same. Because we know the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So this tells me I have two similar figures. So now all I need to do is set up a proportion and solve for x. Go ahead and do that now in the work section of your WSQ. You may need to pause the video, but press play when you're done. Now try this problem. Here we still have two similar triangles. Because I have two right angles here. And these two angles are actually going to be congruent because they're formed by two lines that are crossing each other. And we'll talk more about why that works in class. But know now that those two are congruent angles. Since I know that, these opposite angles must also be congruent. Therefore, I have similar figures. I may need to turn this yellow figure around so that it looks exactly the same as the blue, but I can still use a proportion to solve this problem. Go ahead and do it now in the work section of your WSQ. Here's the proportion you should have set up. Because we have the hypotenuse of this right triangle is going to correspond to the hypotenuse of the second right triangle. We have the leg A, or shorter leg, of this right triangle, which is going to correspond to the shorter leg of the second right triangle. If this is the proportion you've set up, go ahead and solve it. You would solve it by cross multiplying and then dividing. You should have gotten 5 and 2 fifths equals x. Now it's your turn. Solve this problem in the work section of your WSQ. We are done with this lesson. You can go back and watch any portion as many times as you need to, but don't forget to write a summary.